What I'd like to share with you is an installation video on the Jerry Michelek grips. But first we will talk about the grip itself. The concept behind it, when I started shooting revolver, you notice there's no finger grooves on it. And that's very important. And also the size and the shape is very important because I wanted the K-frame to feel like the L-frame to feel like the N-frame. So the shape fits universally on all the Smith & Wesson frames and they feel very similar. You notice it's a relatively thin grip. And what I wanted it was to control the revolver, the recoil with the bottom of the grip. And most grips that you saw back in the day when I first started shooting were relatively wide and I couldn't get my hand around them like I wanted. So this allowed me for a really good grip and I could get the, the grip very high to control it. But the feature of all the guns feeling the same was what I was looking for. It didn't matter what gun I picked up. It was going to index to my eye, my trigger finger, and I could shoot it accurately and also extremely fast. So give me an idea. These grips are manufactured by Hogue and they're made out of pile ferro, which is a hardwood. And what's really trick about the wood itself is the features of the, the grain. It's a really uh, strikingly uh, beautiful grip. So, and it also glues exceptionally well. That pile ferro takes to the glue really good because this is actually a two piece stock. So it's very important that to be durable that you can glue it and it would stay together through the life of the product. So, so there you have it. Uh, they're available in uh, KL and N frame in both checkered and smooth. And where most of the problems come from installation, especially on the round butt style grip, is when you work it on the frame, you have to be extremely careful with the back of the stock. So I'm going to show you that in the video. You don't need a lot of tools, just need a screwdriver, maybe a, a small hammer, and maybe a file. Usually not. So we're going to walk you through that right quick. Uh, give you an idea of the frames Smith & Wesson manufactures. Uh, you got a round butt and a square butt. And it's pretty obvious that the square is, is exactly that. Most of the older guns, the blued guns, were manufactured in the square. I think the only guns now still manufactured by Smith & Wesson currently would be the Classic Series that might have a square. And they've gone exclusively to a round butt style frame like this. So to have these stocks feel the same in your hand, you notice that uh, the way the frames are cut, you have to have a lot more wood on the back of this one to fill it, to have the same dimension in the back. So if you look at the wood on the back of the, the grip itself, you can see the uh, round comes up a lot higher. So when you go to install the round butt grip, you have to be extremely careful with this area. And I'm going to do an installation with the round because it probably is the one that takes the most technique and not actually damage the stock. So what you'll get with the, the grip itself is a little stirrup or a hanger and a screw. So we're going to take the screw out. Usually what I'll do, if I have a, a new grip, I'll just try the grip on the gun without the, without the hanger. And what I'm looking to do is to proceed this way and not this way. So you just start it up into the channel like this. You see where the, the wood starts to interact with the frame? You want to be careful not to buckle it to where you would actually crack the back of the stock. So just come into the frame from the bottom and you notice it came right up and it fitted all the way to the top. And that's telling me the stock itself will fit the frame precisely the way it should. So what I'm going to do next is go ahead and put the hanger onto the frame. You notice this pin on the bottom, this roll pin. This is where the, the hanger or the stirrup will attach. And usually what procedures I do, I'll just bring it over to one side, start one leg over, clip it in like that, and then you can just press it on over and the other side will clip in. So we know the, uh, the roll pin itself will fit in the stock. If it does not fit, you might have to either center it with a hammer. Sometimes they'll come from the factory with this pin not being centered like this, and when you go to put the stock on, of course, it's not going to fit into the channel properly, so you can center it with the back of a screwdriver or a small hammer to make sure that it's it's in the right relationship to go into the stock. And we just certified that in the, in the previous uh, installation, the grip on the frame without the hammer. So we've got the stirrup on, pin is centered. Same thing again, you want to come from the bottom side like this and avoid pinching the stock upwards and just start it in gently. You see how I'm watching the back of the stock here? So it doesn't contact the frame and you just bring it into the channel and there you have it. It's properly installed and I didn't 
interfere with the back of the stock. So to mount it with the screw, of course, just put it in from the bottom of the grip and uh, get the proper screwdriver, guys. You want a hollow ground tip on a screwdriver. If you're going to work on a firearm, you should invest in a hollow ground tip set of screwdrivers. It just uh, keeps the, the screw heads straight and parallel. So we bring it together as a unit here. And you don't have to put a lot of, a lot of force on it at all. Just a few inch pounds of pressure. And I'm shaking it back and forth to make sure it's on there correctly. So there you have it, guys. It's that easy. Just be careful on the back of the stock with the round butt. And the square is even easier. We're going to do the same procedure. We're going to look at the pin to make sure it's square. And it's also the same length on both sides. We've got that. We'll take the stock and do the same thing. Put it in a channel. Bring it into its relationship to the frame, to the top position. And there it is. It's touching. So it's bottom, it's bottom to the frame correctly. So you know it's, it's fully seated. When, these, when this wood contacts the top of the frame, you're in there. So this one fit and it comes in and out really quickly. And it's easy to, uh, to, easy to remove so you know it's a proper fit with the pin. So we're going to take the screw out and hang the hanger again. Once again, you can come in here, put one side over the pin. This pin is really loose, but it'll work. So there we go. And we're centered once again. Very important. You'll notice on the inside of the stock, there's actually a track that this stirrup is going to ride into. So you do that alignment. Just like that, bring it in and seat it fully. And you notice I'm back in position like I was previous. So you know you have a good contact and a good fit. Attach the screw once again. And what you notice on the square compared to the round, it has an opening in the front of the stock. You see this cutaway right here? Uh, Actually, when you're shooting the gun, you don't even notice this, but the whole concept of this cutaway is to give it the exact same frame dimension, hand size fit of the stock to the hand. So without this window here, it would not feel like a round butt grip in your hand. So it's very important that that feature is there. A lot of guys don't like it. Uh, you shoot it, you actually won't even notice it. So, but I want them all the same. So I want the same index. I want the same feel. And that's the only way to achieve it, is to have that window in the front. So that's how easy it is to install the Vitulek grips. But if you run into difficulty, it kind of gives you some ideas where the problems might lie. And it's usually just two aspects of the installation that you really want to pay attention to, and we'll go over it again. And that is the, the pin itself can be actually wider than the grip. So if you need to run a file on it, don't hesitate to make it a little bit more narrow. The idea of this pin, all it's going to do is hold this stirrup from coming off of the frame. It doesn't have to be necessarily as wide as it is stock. And if you start it and you notice that it's dragging, that's probably one of the issues. And uh, when you come into the grip again, guys, you want to come in like this and never like this and just proceed with it. And if you, what I like to do is to hold the frame close and then work it. If you find it snug right here, is to always press the bottom of the grip up this way and work it into the frame. What you'll find on some of the manufacturing tolerances, that some of the frames might be a little bit wider than the other. And on the older guns, on the square butt, I've probably saw more variations of that than on the round. So there again, you want to really contain this to where the motion is going to be smooth and upward and one work it on like that and tap it and that's usually the problem that you find is the pin itself and not the stock so there it is guys installation of the Michelec Smith & Wesson grips round square butt get some